today uh, we're talking about a story. The first one is um, James and Becky Ben. Not their real names, surprisingly, Ben, um, but their real age of 42 and 33. And one of our um, senior expert um, property investment advisors here, Polly Chu, uh, has been working with this client and um, it's got a really, really cool story. So the yeah, theme of this um, case study. So what I'll do, Ben, is I'll, I'll set the scene and then you and I stop and riff on it, okay? But um, uh, the theme is that not all lifestyle design is measured in dollars. So I want people to think that as we sort of work through this story, that not all lifestyle design is measured in dollars, and that'll make um, a ton more sense shortly. But um, in terms of the backstory, um, first of all, uh, James um, is a long distance truck driver, um, 16 hour days, um, spends Monday to Friday on the road and only has the weekend at home, often leaving on Sunday evenings, given the prep for that. So, um, and then uh, the tax is, okay, I'm home on Saturday, but just exhausted. I mean, mm. um, when you're doing those sorts of clicks and doing those sorts of hours and doing that sort of responsibility, um, with the, the loads that you're carrying. I, ca I can't imagine what no. that's like, Ben. I, I, live, I live an hour and a quarter away from the big smoke and if I have to drive up and back two days in a row, I'm like, oh gosh. So you can imagine just doing that all the time long-term, right? Um, and then his wife, Becky, uh, works at a local news agent, um, is at home doing all things domestic engineering with the school pickup and drop-offs and um, supporting the family um, admirably whilst Joe's away. So very, very busy. Um, at home with um, with the family and the kids. So um, they have a principal place of residence um, and they're paying it down. So Ben, so far, setting the scene, just uh, typical people yep. out there navigating certain stuff. How many right kids, Ross? How many kids? Uh, they have two kids, uh, three kids, Ben, 12, kids. 9 yep. and 5. Yeah. Um, so here's the problem, okay? Um, James is, um, is very, very grateful for what Becky does for the family, right? But he's had a couple of divorces, right? Um, from being away so much and doesn't yeah. want this one to be like that. So how's that for recognizing, um, you know, what's happened in the past and then straightening up and going, hey, look, I don't want my past to be a predictor of my future. I love that. So he wants to be able to spend more time with the family, as I mentioned, 12, 9 and 5, those three kids. Yeah. Um, and would even like to consider changing to week on, week off, right? Um, but here's the challenge with that. If James was to do that, um, the overtime and allowance would drop by Ben wait for it forty two thousand a year. It's a big um, hit. It's a big hit, right? So you mm. can see the dilemma. We can just stop and pause yeah. there. Someone actually has this lifestyle by design desire and this practical reality of wanting to make um, uh, ends meet, which means that if I serve the master of lifestyle design right now, I, it, it comes at the cost of forty two thousand. It's a, it's a big call, Ben. Yeah, it's a huge trade-off, Bryce. And I think, you know, at, at the end of the day, in terms of James's skill set, he's very experienced at what he does. He's obviously, you know, truck drivers, um, safe and reliable. They're the sort of key traits and components that you want in your in your sort of workers. But, at, you know, 16-hour days, right, that's long haul, lots of travelling, those types of things. Now, the trade-off is if I can't go and find... Uh, gainful employment that's going to give me that type of financial reward. But I've got three kids and a wife um, who's also working sort of part-time at the news agency. There's going to be a trade-off. And the big trade-off there is I've got a mortgage to pay and I've obviously, you know, got to uh, build a lifestyle for the for the family as well. So that's a big call. And 42000 in, you know, this current standard where we've got higher inflation and higher living costs, that's material. So in a way, James is not so much uh, absolutely caught in this environment, but there's a there's a really strong magnet that's pulling him into that particular situation, and so he's got to embrace it because the, the the more that he you know tries to push against it, um, that's going to affect his mental health and it's going to affect you know how we work. So embrace the fact that he's got this gainful employment and it's working well and it's providing for the family. Um, and then seeing what it's going to do, you know, as as with the plan we're about to unpack, this is the exciting bit of what that money is able to achieve for the family. So I think it, it's a really good story and it sets up nicely in terms of understanding the positives that come from the sacrifice that James is making. Yeah, and people can reflect on what what is my version of the dilemma that uh, James is feeling right now? What What decision do I want to make where I'm on the line? 
or if I make that, it comes at the cost of something else that um, yeah. is causing some fear, right? So that that was the very thing that was going on for James. Okay, that 42, how does that actually impact their ability to pay down their home, right? So there is equity in their home. Um, so they were wondering, is now actually the best time to invest um, in property with it? So a couple of extra things. Doesn't want to be driving a truck at 60 years old, um, number one. So they wanted to plan for retirement but needed some help. So here's the deal. Um, this is what I love. James started listening to the TPC, to the podcast and reading books, including you know MMSA, Make Money Simple Again and implemented money smarts and then so becky was on board so how good's that so you're in a situation you're in the car you're in the truck so using that as um zig ziglar used to always call it um automobile university back in the day yeah. when it was cassette tapes ben when i was putting cassette tapes in my little yeah. master 323 i was driving to uni um so it's automobile university so um he's able to to use that and so here's the deal here we are in um uh, May of 2024, uh, but James found the property couch in October 23. So w- what's our maths there, Ben? It's probably about seven months ago. Not yep. only started listening, but took action, right? So the, from the from the point of actually being introduced to the point of actually taking action, it's actually probably below average, I would have thought, because a lot of people still spend a lot of time, you know, uh, absorbing, taking in the information, but not actually taking that first step, which is actually the the, the most challenging part. Yeah, and I've obviously been privileged to have a look um, at the plan that's been built by Polly and also have a look at their information on the More platform. And I'm really, you know, thrilled for looking at the way in which they're using Money Smarts and, and they're actually smashing it, Bryce. Mm-hmm. Um, if I have a look at basically where their current situation is in terms of anticipated surplus income and though, they're well above the line. Uh, and we talk about swimming between the flags they're they're on the positive side of the flags, yeah. so you know that is that is a huge huge effort for them. And um, yeah, there's there's also some exciting new features that we've built into more, such as the the offset loan tracker, right? So effectively now you can connect all of your offset accounts, and you can see them on the insights charts on the mortgage. So every time you then update the balances of your offset account or the mortgage, you can actually see the impact that it's making and you can see then what your net debt is against each of those loans. So another little great little tool that we've added literally this week um, in terms of on the platform as we continue to keep providing these insight tools to help people um, see the progress that they're making so you know they can they can then continue with building those new habits and that's exactly what James and Becky are trying to do here their financial literacy was at the lower end and they're moving it higher on that journey and i think that is credit to them in terms of understanding how that works and and we're just going to continue to keep providing those insights um, along the journey so they can see the progress that they're making, which means that they'll continue to keep maintaining those habits. But So that's the external obvious stuff that was going on for James and Becky. But here's the internal questions that no one actually gets to see when you're seeing these people. Um, and the number one um, question was, how do we do it, right? Mm. Um, not sure how we do it. And um, at the time, lacking knowledge and being very time poor, didn't know where to start, right? Yeah. So they're, they're common traits and common themes that a lot of people can go through. So, But here... Here's the epiphany. Here's the here's the penny drop moment that happened uh, at some point um, that they they both both James and Becky self confessed didn't have the financial literacy growing up, um, but having access to the materials opened their eyes that investing. Here's the here's the beautiful part. Investing isn't just for rich people, yeah. and that they can make a change towards their future um, and pass these you know really strong financial habits onto their three kids um, and make a difference for their family. Andrew and I, my wife and I talk about generational change all the time. You get to be the pivot point where you can actually look up and see your family tree and go, oh, that's the way it's always been. Or you get this point to go, no, actually, I'm going to actually break the chain. I'm going to change the belief of that and actually and be the, the catalyst of change for the family tree that goes before you. And there's actually more on that uh, a bit later on for this story. But that's a that's a really good aha moment that they both went through that, um it's not just for rich people. I love hearing that, and I and and it, and it irritates us enormously when um, the the perception of property investors um, is that it's all just for greedy, fat, rich cat, uh, rich fat cats. Did I get that right? Um, oh, that's good enough. I think I, we understand your flavour. We understood right the flavour. Yeah. It sounded a bit <laughs> clustery when I dropped it out, but um, 
it is actually uh, statistically more likely to be the person living next door to you trying to have a swing than it is to be someone who's stereotypically um, uh, the guy from Wall Street. What was his name? Gordon Gecko. Gordon Gordon Gecko. Greed is good. Yeah, that's right. Um, Greed is good. Yep. So there we go. That was the epiphany. So here's the plan. Ben, and chime in at any time. Um, I'll just get the details out and then we might do some commentary around sure. it. But um, here was the plan. After going through the conversation around having all that backstory, having a conversation with Polly, digesting all of that into, okay, what is it that makes a difference for you, lifestyle by design? Here's, here's the exciting part, Ben. I think everyone listening to this will be super excited by this, that the first port of call was to transition James to week on, week off arrangement, so he's more time at home, by July 2024, i.e. soon. Ben, yeah. let's just pause and reflect on that. Like, gone from, I don't know how to avoid a third divorce to here's, here's a believable plan on how you can actually um, get some of your physical energy back, not just be totally exhausted on Saturday, and as you'll see, one of the goals is to continue to pay off the mortgage get that clear clarity around being able to do that. Oh, geez, I would have loved to have been a fly on the wall and James realised that. Well, I think, it, you know, this is where the you make the invisible visible, Bryce, where you can see the models and you can see, well, once we've worked out what our regular spending is and then we've got our provisional spending or our irregular spending and we can see the buffer that we've been able to create, but we're also positive over that time and we're still paying off the debt. To, to the point that we will find out in a minute in terms of when uh, James and Becky get to retire. So, yes, it does obviously delay retirement, but wait a minute. I've got a, what have I got? I've got a, you know, in terms of kids, I've got a 12-year-old, 9-year-old and a 5-year-old. I won't get to see them grow up. <laughs> so so the, the trade-off is enormous in terms of the upside as opposed to the financial reward. So... Um, if I can still retire in my 60s, and we'll find out, we'll reveal that in a minute, um, and still live off a good, comfortable income in retirement, but actually get a bit of my life back, thinking that I'm I'm a grind to the road, um, you know, where I have to basically work Sunday night to get home late Friday and then really just get the one full day off, which is my recovery day before I'm on. Now, potentially I can have, you know, maybe even if it's half a week to start with or a full week. It's, it's now available to them to be thinking about that. As long as they stick to their discipline spending, you know, that's going to be a thing. This is a really exciting story for them. Oh, it's so exciting. So I'll, I'll, I'm going to rewind back to the opening statement we made, Ben, was that not all lifestyle design is measured in dollars, right? So we had a, we had a trade-off of 42000 not actually knowing if we could actually go week on, week off. So the clarity that was given here to James and to Becky, of course, um, is that that could actually happen. So I just I just absolutely love that. And here's the other part. The, the plan was to buy two investment properties, not four, not 10, not 12, not renovate, not redevelop, not subdivide, just buy two passive established uh, investment properties. Um, one in 2028, hold the phone, Ben, not, not now in 2024. We'll get back to that shortly. One in 2028 for the today's equivalent of 600,000 bucks. In in four years' time, it'll be worth more. We just talk about present value, and but when we actually make the decision, it's in future value. And then the second one is in 2030 for $550,000, all right, with a, with a slightly higher yield. So what does that do, Ben, in terms of retirement? It means that James can go part-time at 60 and then fully retire at 67 with Becky being able to do it at 58. Week on, week off see more of the kids, partly retire at 60, fully retire at 67, and I think importantly, make a very, very important strategic tactical step towards making sure it doesn't have a third divorce. Just a, just a really good way to set up this story. Yeah, I mean, you know, passive income of 90000 which is, you know, $1,730 per week. Now, by that stage, you've got to be thinking the kids would be leaving home, so really what other, you know, we've got savings there anyway, um, that's potentially going to help in terms of, um, you know, paying it forward and building legacy and, you know, training the kids' habits in terms of this is how it looks to be financially secure, financial freedom, this is what financial freedom looks like. All of those things, you know, bode really, really well for that story. Now, you know, in terms of double-clicking on this idea that they wanted to be debt-free on the family home, is 
one of the levers that they're playing with. So they're ultimately making a decision around risk and adjusting that risk. And, and also the trade-off in their mind is more time with family. Um, and I think that's a, that's, that's a very healthy trade-off uh, for, for those people who, who, who find that you know, really important for them. Well said, Ben. So we talked about um, 2028 being the first investor probably four years away. Let's unpack a little bit about that. So first of all, just for clarity, um, for anyone listening to this, Ben, uh, James and Becky had equity in their home and they had cash flows that allowed them to buy an investment property right now. So to your point, you just said there, had equity, had cash flow, could buy right now, right? But they were on track to fully offset their home um, by 2028. And here's where the narrative starts to, to sort of take shape for the people listening. Why, why wouldn't you go ahead right now? Well, uh, due to James's uh, mental health challenges, um, they both decided as a family unit, as part of their lifestyle by design goals, not around financial, that it was more important than for them to have their home paid off and get that peace of mind and the reduced anxiety for the family before taking on risks for more investing. Now, you and I can sit here, Ben, and go, you know, time is the secret source. Yeah. Um, Warren Buffett talks about compounding. But it also, but it's also real life we're talking about here. And we're talking yep. about people being able to put their head on the pillow with both eyes closed. Um, so it's not, it's not good enough to have, you know, um, to buy into the concept of time and compounding and put your head on the pillow and have one eye open. Um, that's not the game here. So back to our meta narrative. Some lifestyle by design is measured in non-financial terms. So that's essentially what we did here. So Polly absorbed that, took on board that feedback and resisted the temptation to project her needs onto this particular couple by saying, let's buy now because it wasn't what suited them best. And that's really, really important. So um, so $600,000 will be more expensive in 2028. So by the time they actually come to execute on it, they will be paying more. Um, here's the important part, because they had clarity, they looked at their numbers and they looked over the hill, their targets and numbers projections still worked, enabled them to get the end goal. The North Star was fine. So it helped them still make that decision. So um, so that's important. And that plan, just, just for a couple of little side um, takeaways here, they can still enjoy life along the way, included a $35,000 uh, uh, renovation to, to put in a pool um, and importantly, Ben, helping their kids buy their first cars with gifts at their 21st birthday. So there's a lot to, there's a lot to digest there and unpack. Yeah, well, it's a classic case of this is real life. Like ultimately, you want to give your kids a leg up. So maybe going 50-50 on a car, um, you know, they get a part-time job, but by the time they're 18, they'll match dollar for dollar on the car and that just gets them their mobility and starts to give them the independence so they can start to, to you know, really build out that story. Um, there's one thing I want to make sure that we talk about in here, and and that, that is this whole concept of, of risk profiling and getting alignment around what that looked like. So we saw James's mental health was playing into that. Again, you know, when you're driving, you know, maybe a V-dub, VW with, you know, that's two trailers behind a semi on a, on a big road and you're responsible for your life and other people's lives on the road, being really clear and, and conscious and, and in the moment is, is potentially going to save lives. So we want all of our truck drivers with a healthy state of mind. So, you know, in terms of James's ability to be clear, focused and have clarity around that is really important. But we also are discovering that both James and Becky are on a financial literacy journey. And we do know through all of the our own experiences with the thousands of clients that we've helped, but also it's it's throughout the financial services literature, is that over time our risk profiles do change. And they change predominantly if things are compounding steadily over time, then our risk profile gets a little bit more comfortable. And then potentially we might get a little bit more comfortable with changing up the strategy. And that's completely fine. But we also know that if there's been a significant event on the downside, then that can kill our confidence and certainly reduce our risk profiling um, because of that, that recency experience. So we call that recency bias in terms of how that changes our behaviours and our attitudes and can really knock you know, the confidence away. And case study number two today, we'll talk more about that. But this is just a good example um, of... Um, you know, what you were saying before about Polly not projecting what we think is best practice. We could show you that you could make more money. We could show you that you could retire earlier um, if you acted now. Um, but it's about going on that journey. And it's their journey, not ours. 
um, and ultimately as a trusted advisor, that's your job. Your job is to try and make the risk feel comfortable, so debt-free on the family home before we start taking any more risks. Uh, more work-life balance um, is also the payoff in terms of what that story looks like. So I think from mine, it's a, it's a really nice story to sort of say, this is a tailored solution specifically for James and Becky and their family. And that's, that's what, a, that's what a, you know, if you think about what is the perfect job of financial services or people who are property investment advisors, is to find that perfect solution for every customer that you're dealing with and every household that you're dealing with. And this is a, this is a beautiful case study of that particular example. Yeah, and uh, our flagship of 2000 bucks a week is not for everyone, Ben. Uh, that's why we put 1730 They're going after uh, 90000 And that yep. was sufficient what they needed and what they wanted. So uh, for some people, it's 90 For some people, we've done plans where they um, stoke summer series um, on $30,000 um, passive income. Yeah. Ben. So the number doesn't matter. We're just trying to create... Uh, a narrative for people to go. Okay, that's what we're going to aim for. Two thousand. Some people come in so they can want to aim for two thousand. Some can, people can do three, four, mm-hmm. five, and yep. some people can only um, do um, one or one and a half. Or in this case, seventeen thirty. It's fine. Uh, it, is it doesn't matter what it is as long as you get what you want. So here's a couple of things uh, for the people at home to understand how this came into fruition. Right. Number one, uh, they had an initial conversation with Polly before Christmas, and engaged in the conversation before Christmas, even though some of the work started in uh, later in February. Um, the reason I wanted to um, uh, point that out, Ben, is because there's a lesson. They took action when most people leave it to inverted commas next year. And the next year comes and momentum happens. It's it's actually being able to start and then just take that first step, even if it means, okay, we've started, done the first thing, Christmas comes and goes, we do the adjustment, we blow out the cobwebs of public holidays and any breaks we're taking up to Australia Day, but it's it means once we're in February, we got momentum. We're already moving rather than saying, oh, should we kick that off again? Should we start again? That's number one. Uh, number two, um, they were both on the same page. Um, James and Becky were both on the same page. What a beautiful privilege it is when you are in a relationship where you are both on the same page because we've seen plenty of scenarios where, uh, and there's some probably some people listening to this um, now, where one's driving and one's not interested. Uh, one's driving or one's actually not um, encouraging at all and actually, um, uh, in fact, probably um, discouraging in some cases. So if you if you are that person, we feel for you. Um, ben and I are privileged enough to be in supportive relationships where we are on the same page. In this case, James and Becky are also the same. So that's important. I want to stop and acknowledge that. Um, two, that the whole end-to-end process from saying, yes, let's um, make some action to um, being in a position where they can execute eight weeks two months, Ben. So there's a bit of work. Um, We're summarizing the highlights real, but behind the scenes, it takes some work to identify what some of these anxieties are, to work out what's important, what to work out um, what are the obstacles that we need to overcome. Um, Polly also did some some meetings on Saturdays because that was the only time um, that um, James was free. Now, uh, our team, generally speaking, have um, commitments to their own families as well on the weekends. So we do, you know, a lot of night work. Um, But on the weekends, we try as best we can to quarantine for our team to have the time with their family as well. But in this case, Polly was so invested uh, in the outcome here um, that she did. uh, This was one thing she flagged with me that uh, she was really, really keen. She was emotionally invested into helping them. um, So was inspired to help them get out of that lifestyle. So that's one thing to think about. there, there was lots to digest as the, the decision to delay that investment property, number one, was not an easy one. And it actually took some time. Um, but it was important to ensure, you know, what we've talked about, we, that Polly was able to risk profile what's important to them, what's, what's, what is it what they need, not what is it what we need. Um, uh, they refinanced um, some of their existing loan and they continued um, with Money Smart. So, but here's the deal. Now what you have is when you have a North Star, you have these check-in points. So the plan gives them targets. So that's what we're heading towards, 2028, um, 2030. But it also allows you to know what you're actually aiming for in terms of a big goal for them is to fully offset um, their mortgage, um, which was super, super important for not only their own financial goals, but their, but their own health goals as well. So that's how they took action, Ben. So there was a fair bit in that. Yeah, I think, and the 36-month cash flow forecast that they would have also got 
um, is a really nice um, program of work that will show them up towards heading towards that 2026, 2028 timeframes and working through that. So, and again, as they build confidence, you know, their situation and confidence might make them go a little bit earlier. We just don't know. But the best part about the model is we've looked at their most comfortable case. And so as they, again, build that financial literacy, we'll see where that takes them on that particular journey. So the end result um, from an achievement point of view is they'll have their family home paid off by 2028. They'll have financial freedom, the $90,000 in passive income uh, by 2048. Um, they'll be retirement in 2048 um, at the age of 67 for James and 58 for Becky. In terms of net worth, again, this is the power of compounding indexation that goes on here, 7.8 million. Nest egg, 5.2 million and nest egg in present value terms. So if you bring that back in today's dollar terms, a very, very healthy uh, 2.9 million um, if these projections do come to fruition. So um, it's nice to know. I mean, there's no guarantee. Never is. right? There's, you know, lots of navigating to do. But just to know, to your point, Bryce, the North Star um, is, is, is plausible. And so we've just got to keep, you know, unless you're using a, a driving analogy, got to keep on trucking in terms of getting towards that particular point. And I really love, you know, what's happening here for, uh, for James and Becky. So that's the that's the obvious um, results, Ben. The the not so obvious results to anyone who's not close to the story is um, uh, it, the, it was a way to cut back James's overtime, which was impacting his mental health, physical energy, and family time. Tick done. Um, the Becky and the family um, benefit. Tick done. Removed the anxiety um, that they can they can reach the North Star, Ben, without having to have honky nuts and tomato sauce along the way, so they could have some life along the way, and it gave them a really clear path forward. Um, which will set them up for success, not only for for James and for Becky. Um, remaining married is the goal here. Paying off their home is the goal here. Passing on financial literacy to the kids is the goal here, um, which is exciting. So here's a couple of wrap-up notes that uh, we got yep. from Polly, um, just to um, add a little bit of ice into the story. Um, uh, number one, doesn't mean you have to buy property straight away. I think we, we, we covered that as well. So we really wanted them to be able to sleep um, well at night which leads into there's no right or wrong answer. Um, you, we use the analogy of Google Maps um, in the business, Ben, and it's basically if I want to go from where I'm in Torquay and I want to drive home to Perth, I can put in a, I can put in, a, in Google Maps, but it usually gives me the fastest, but it also gives me two other alternatives which consider other things. And that's pretty much how we define what we do. We can show you the fastest, we can show you the coast road, we can show you the most scenic, we can show you the road that stops in to visit the family and relatives along the way. But what is what is uh, universal across every plan is where we are, where we start and where we want to end up, ends up in the same A to B, but the way we get there is entirely tailored and different. So um, so that's, that's fine. Um, the Money Smarts changed their financial literacy. So they were really grateful to um, have read those books. Um, and this... This is lifestyle design 101, right? We got an income, we got all the hit the beats, first cars, 21st, enjoying experiences along the way. Um, but here's the final um, here's the final point we want to do. Um, now James um, tells his dad what to do with his money, right? This is the change in financial literacy. He is now the financial guidance to the family tree above, not just the family tree below. He's dad's advisor now, which is just an incredible um, transformation, incredible story. So got rid of all the bad money habits, transformed their story and changed family tree. So um, uh, James and Becky, uh, well done on taking action. And um, we are certainly excited. Come bring on July, Ben, when uh, week on week off for driving trucks uh, for James becomes a reality, which is super cool. So it's a brilliant story all around. So I just can't wait for them to to basically live out their plan because that's that's the journey they're on right now. So it's a, a really exciting proposition for them, and they should be they should be acknowledged firstly for taking action. Like ultimately, you know, you talk about that pre Christmas commitment, but that is a significant um, action backed by a, a significant mindset shift of saying it is possible for us. Um, and we're going to make sure we leave no stone unturned um, to see out this particular plan. So congratulations to both of them.